In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Welcome, everyone, on this Sunday after Easter, which is also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. You see to my left is, well, my right, your right, the image of the Divine Mercy that uh, we honor because it was Jesus who first introduced this image of himself through a humble Polish nun called Sister uh, Faustina Kowalska and asked her to relay this message of mercy to the world, that above all, God is merciful towards us, fueled by his enormous and profound love for each one of us. And so today, at Jesus' own request, the Church, as it was declared by Pope John Paul II when he canonized Sister Faustina in the year 2000 as the first saint of this millennium, that this day throughout the Universal Church would be celebrated as Divine Mercy Sunday. We come towards the mercy of God now as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries of the Eucharist, as we ask God to grant us his mercy that we may truly come into communion with Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, 
by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials. 
so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? How blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. There is so much in the scriptures today that we could talk about, and we'd have to be here for a very long time if we pulled all this out and, and talked about it. But um, one of the things is, okay, first we are in the conclusion of the octave of Easter, this eighth day of the Easter of celebration, and we are still very intensely celebrating Jesus' resurrection. This entire Easter season, up until Pentecost, we will be reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which tell of the development of the early church that took place after the resurrection of Jesus and how there was so much persecution and trouble, and the, the disciples found it very difficult to proclaim the gospel. All the Christians found it very difficult to proclaim the gospel. 
But for me, that's one of the, the greatest proofs that our Christian faith is real and true. Because if it was easy, everybody could climb on board and say, yeah, we could follow this. But they had to face all that opposition, that persecution, the disciples, the, the early Christians, but they persisted in that because they believed. They believed that Jesus truly was the Christ, and it didn't matter what they went through. Their faith in him was important. And so for me, that's one of the greatest uh, proofs of our faith, that Jesus is real, that the people who are eyewitnesses to him, that knew him, that they were willing to be, suffer all that they did, even lay down their lives for him, because they knew it was real. Our gospel today takes us to the upper room where the disciples ate the Last Supper with, with uh, Jesus the night before he died. They were gathered there on Sunday, the day of the resurrection, and Jesus came to them. And the first thing that he said to them was, peace be with you. Jesus offers us peace in our hearts. And that's something important for us, to calm the storm in our hearts of all that, all that fear we are afraid of causes fear in our hearts. Jesus comes to relieve of us of that. And then one of the other things he did, and most important thing of all, he gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit and said, whose sins you forgive are forgiven. And also, whose sins you retain are retained. And so Jesus gave his disciples, who he ordained his priests at the Last Supper in that very same room just a few days earlier, he gave them the authority and power to forgive sins. He established the sacrament of reconciliation, which we call confession or, or, or penance, that through the visible signs of, of the, the apostles and today the priests of the church, Jesus makes himself present to assure the faithful that they are forgiven and to lead them in the way of that reconciliation with God. Jesus gave them that authority and the priests that will come after them the, the authority to do that. Now, one of the interesting things was is that Thomas was not with him. I really like Thomas. I can identify him, and I think a lot of us can. He was not with the disciples in that upper room that first day, and they said to him, oh, we, Thomas, we saw Jesus. We, he's alive. He was thinking, well, what kind of a fool do you take me for? Yeah, right. I won't believe, not until I can see Jesus myself and put my finger in his wounds, to put my hand in his side, then I'll believe. But until then, I'm not a fool. Well, fast forward a week after the resurrection, which is today, and Thomas gets his wish. After Jesus first says, peace be with you, he points to Thomas and says, come here, Thomas. Put your finger into my hand. Put your hand into my side. And don't persist in your unbelief, but belief. And so all Thomas could do was just fall to his knees and say, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says to him, yeah, Thomas, you believe in me now because you've seen me. But how blessed are those who have not seen but have believed. And guess what? You, me, all of us who believe in Jesus, we are those people that Jesus calls blessed because we believe even though you have not seen him. And so Jesus, already 2,000 years ago, could see us. He looked down at his, in his divine way, 2,000 years to this very day where we are now. And he knows that we are believers, and he calls us blessed because we have faith, because we believe. And that's something pretty special, to know that Jesus already thought of us, already knew that we would believe, even without benefit of sight. With all this mercy that is being talked about, this uh, reconciliation, forgiveness of sins, that is all part and parcel with the Divine Mercy Sunday that we're celebrating today. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, back in the early 1900s, a lowly Polish nun, Sister Faustina Kowalska, had a vision of Jesus, a series of visions of Jesus. And he wanted Sister Faustina to deliver a message to the world that God loves us 
And powered by that love is his mercy, that he loves us so much, and that he desires for us to come to him. And he asks Sister Faustina to have an image of what she saw, the image of Jesus that she saw, had that painted so that the world could see it. We call that the image of the divine mercy. And then underneath the feet of Jesus would be the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you. That's what Jesus asks of us, to believe, but also to trust him, that everything that, that he says and does for us is real and true, and that we hold that in our hearts. For everyone that comes unto Jesus can be sure that God's love is so powerful and that his mercy for us is so powerful that we can stand forgiven, even though we don't deserve it. It's just a gift that is given to us by God. And so today that we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, we are reminded of so precious a gift that this is, and we are grateful. The chaplet to the Divine Mercy, which is prayed on a, a regular rosary, which begins with the, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the, the Apostles' Creed, and then the prayers that, that on, the, on the rosary beads are said, that, those, that prayer should be said every day if possible, even especially at 3 o'clock in the afternoon if possible, the, day, the hour that Jesus died. Because that is the hour of mercy, Jesus tells us. The, the hour in which God's heart is poured out, poured open for us to give us the forgiveness that we need. So let's be grateful for all that we've been given in our faith, the love that God pours out over us. It's just so much. There, like I said, there is so much that we could talk about today when the scriptures and this Feast of Divine Mercy just isn't time to be able to adequately even begin to touch on it. But this was just a little sampling of what this day, what these scriptures are bringing us today on this, this Sunday after Easter. But let us, as the psalm says, let us rejoice and be glad because this is the day the Lord has made. And we rejoice and we are glad in it. So now together, you and I, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain, for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by, by the power of the Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the, the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are told that God's mercy endures forever, so we rely on the infinite mercy of God as we bring forth our needs and the needs of the world now in prayer. For the church, that we may spread God's mercy to those most in need of it, the impoverished, the imprisoned, the ill, the lonely, and the forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That political leaders may be formed in the Lord's mercy as they seek to govern in righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For victims of persecution and their loved ones, especially for those who were killed in the Holocaust, that they may be comforted in the arms of a merciful God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. 
for God's healing and protection for all people as we face this difficult time. May all health care professionals be guided by the Holy Spirit in finding a resolution to control and eliminate this worldwide health threat. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. That we may share the Lord's mercy with those who harbor resentment, anger, or fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For all the intentions that are written in our community book of prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For all who have died, that they may come into God's eternal kingdom of light, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. At this Mass, we especially pray for the repose in the soul of boy Villa Signor and for our own private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, you have given us a new birth through the resurrection of your Son. May we share this living hope with our families, friends, and neighbors. Hear this and all the prayers we bring to you this day and grant them through your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death 
and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your name, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as together we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember, boy, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe, from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. As the Apostle Thomas said, My Lord and my God, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, everyone, for being with us today on this, this octave of Easter, this Divine Mercy Sunday. 
Today truly is a, a day that uh, we receive the, God's gifts, the benefit of his love for us through his mercy, and we are reminded of that. I thank you for your generous donations to us, even though we've been closed and, and uh, we've been trying to uh, deal with this closure as best we can, but you have been generous enough in going through the online giving, just clicking on that uh, little link there on our webpage, or people have been calling and giving us their credit card numbers, or they've been sending in their checks through the mail, and we appreciate it so much, all your generosity. Um, so thank you, thank you so much for, for doing that and helping to keep us afloat during, during this time. And our prayers are with you to, that, that you may uh, overcome this and that we, we will all get through this and we'll be better and stronger for it. Thanks to God's, God's blessings and God's grace that is, that is given to us. I did thank uh, all of our crew that is here, just how many, there's five of us here today that put this mass together and, and I appreciate your, your music and the camera people and, and the readers and the altar service, all that. Thank you so much for that. And I thank all of you for being with us. And I send my greetings out to, to all of you, all the parishioners of Our Lady of Las Vegas Parish. I'm glad that you are with us. And if you know people who are not watching or don't know that we're here, you know, let them know. Give them a call on the phone or whatever. Let, us, let them know that we're here. And please extend my, my best wishes and my greetings to them also. And also to the other people who are out there. I know my family out there in Michigan, in this Wyandotte, Michigan, and other places in Michigan are, are watching, the friends and, and, and family in Illinois and, and, and Ohio, and even New Jersey, because Mike's dad is, is in New Jersey watching. So again, hi to Mike's dad out there. And to, to all of you, and even in Iowa, they're watching too, I think, well, I heard. So thank you for that. And um, so as we go forth to um, live this week, Remember that we are going to be here um, every day this week. Please join us for Mass. Uh, we will be here. So let us now receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank you.